Hi, this video is for you if you have ever been a math fanatic or ever loved maths in school. Don't worry if you ever hate maths too, because in next ten minutes we will be simplifying how we have been deluded about mathematics and how Indian mathematicians were never given the credit. India is a land of some of the world's greatest mathematicians. However, we have never been acknowledged enough. Aryabhat invented zero. Ramanujan changed the way of thinking of how religion goes hand in hand with maths. Here we are to burst another stereotype on how the great trio S. H. Srikhande, R. C. Bose, and E. T. Parker proved the renowned mathematician Euler's conjecture wrong. On the day of twenty sixth April, nineteen fifty nine, their names flashed on the front page of the New York Times, and the trio was entitled as the Euler Spoilers. So let us quickly get some of the insights into their interesting lives. The first mathematician that we will be talking about is Dr. Sharad Chandra Srikhande. Dr. Srikhande was an Indian mathematician. Surprisingly, he crossed a century in his lifetime. He was 102 years old when he died. He was the first student who did his research work under the guidance of Dr. R. C. Bose, and he completed his PhD within a span of just one year. He published a landmark paper on Srikhande graph while he was working on the Euler conjecture. If you want to know more about the Srikhande graph, stay tuned as we will be coming up with the new videos soon. Srikhande graph has various applications in algebra, group theory, and topology. Dr. Srikhande was a gold medalist in his college. He completed most of his studies with the help of scholarships. After his retirement in 1978, he worked as the director of Harish Chandra Research Institute in Allahabad. He was very jolly. He loved to travel and was a complete family man. He was quite humble and pragmatic. He used to have a peculiar habit of writing his research papers on the envelopes of the mails he received. The covers which we generally throw away were the ones which carried most of his research work. Now let us learn a bit about the mentor himself Dr Raj Chandra Bose Dr R C Bose was an Indian American mathematician and statistician he specialized in design theory finite geometry and the theory of error correcting codes his name is an integral part of the terms bch codes that is bose chaudhary hockenheim error correcting code and bose mesner algebra He had worked profusely in various mathematical fields like different sets, coding theory, graph theory, and what not. He tried his hands in almost every field of mathematics. He published a plethora of papers and articles. He had the flair of languages and could recite verses in Arabic, Bengali, Persian, Sanskrit, and Urdu. There is a center called R C Bose Center for Cryptology and Security in the I S I, that is Indian Statistical Institute. R C Bose had interesting hobbies. Despite being a mathematician, he was an avid gardener. He loved history, art, and used to visit major art galleries during his travels. He had some. He had said some beautiful lines to one of his students while teaching in his class that only Hindus could understand the design of experiments as in the subject we work on the same structure in different forms where the plots are viewed as points blocks are viewed as lines and a plot in a block is viewed as a point incident with a line Hindus do the same thing they worship the same god but in different forms now let's move on to the third person in the trio dr ernest tilden parker initially he worked in a computer company but his love for mathematics brought him to the field of research and thus he became a professor His PhD was on quadruply transitive groups from the Ohio State University. He used a method that is used to design statistical experiments known as the balanced incomplete block design that is BIBD. 
Stay tuned to know more about BIBD as we'll discuss this in further slides. BIBD has real life applications in cryptography, error control coding and even in clinical trials of medicines. Parker also disproved another conjecture on tournaments by Paul Adoz and Leo Moser. There's currently a fellowship after his name that is ET Parker Memorial Fellowship for the graduate students in the field of combinatorial ma mathematics or statistics in the University of Illinois. Now, let us head towards the conjecture given by Leonhard Euler. Euler was a legendary Swiss mathematician. He was almost blind when he began working over this problem. The puzzle goes like, imagine that there are 36 officers belonging to six different military regiments, each regiment having six officers of different ranks. How does one arrange them in the form of a square such that each row and column has six officers and no rank or regiment appears more than once in a row and column? The puzzle has been simplified by considering nine officers instead of 36, belonging to three different regiments, each regiment having one officer of each of the three ranks. Now, the desired arrangement can be better understood with the help of Latin squares. This is a simplification of the problem using Latin squares. Let us first understand what a Latin square exactly is. A Latin square is an n cross n array filled with n different symbols, each occurring exactly once in each row and exactly once in each column. This simplified problem is further split into two parts for better understanding. As you can see, in the first Latin square, we have considered regiments such that no regiment is repeating in its row and column. Now, these regiments are numbered as 1, 2 and 3. Take for example, element 1. In the first row and the first column, it is occurring only once. Take the element 3. Again, in the second row and second column, it is appearing only once. Now, consider the second Latin square, where we have considered the ranks labeled as 1, 2, 3. You can observe that, in the same way, no rank is repeating in its respective row and column. Now, the third matrix is the superposition of the first and the second Latin square. Again. Take any element to say 11. The first one represents the regiments and the second one here represents the rank. Similarly, taking element 23 where 2 represents the regiment and 3 represents the rank. And in the same way, it is appearing only once in the second row and the first column. Hence, the property of being a Latin square is intact. And also, all the elements of this Latin square are distinct. Since all the elements of the third Latin square are unique and as per the definition of orthogonal Latin squares, that is, if two Latin squares of the same order are superimposed and the ordered pair entities are all distinct, in the same way, this third Latin square formed by the superposition of the first two Latin squares is orthogonal. Now, understanding the situation in a slightly different way. Here, the first matrix is same as in the previous case, whereas in the second matrix, the numbers have been replaced by colors. So, red, blue and green now represent the rank. Again, the same case says, for example, the red color is occurring only once in its respective row and column. The resultant matrix here is the superposition of these two Latin squares. Here, the red colored one is appearing only once in the whole Latin square. You will not find any other red colored one in the Latin square. And same is the case with every element here. Hence, the third Latin square is again orthogonal. Now, moving on to what Euler concluded about this problem. 
he studied and observed that he got similar results for all odd numbers and the numbers divisible by 4. Now, coming back to our original problem, not to forget it consisted of 36 officers. So, if we want to construct in terms of Latin squares, we require a pair of orthogonal Latin squares of order 6. Euler tried to construct this but couldn't do so or find any. So, he concluded that one such pair of order 6 didn't exist at all. He stated his conjecture that no solutions existed for a number n that when divided by 4 leaves a remainder 2. For example, 6. Whenever we divide 6 by 4, we get a remainder 2. His conjecture was true for oddly even numbers. Now, what are these oddly even numbers? It's simple to understand. So, an oddly even number is firstly an even number. Second, it can be divided by 2 only once. And third, its quotient by 2 is odd. Say for example, 6, 10 and 14. You can check yourself. So, I'd like to end this video here with Euler's conclusion. We'll soon be coming up with the second part of the video about the unwinding of this conjecture. If you found this content informative hit that subscribe button and if you have any doubts or suggestions or queries don't forget to write in the comment section below if you don't want to miss any of our videos click on the bell icon to get notified every time we come up with something new thank you